over, you just can't breathe. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're turning into a cute little witch. What makes this a witch tutorial you might ask? Quite frankly, it's just the hat. But I wanted to do like a dark, vampy, but still pretty tutorial for this Halloween. Something cute, but like, you know, still got that Halloween vibe going on. I saw this hat online and I thought it was the cutest shit I ever saw in my life because like, I'll show you guys in more detail later, but this is like a real hat. Like it's knitted and it, you can wear it like not for Halloween. It's like not a costume hat. So it kind of spawned the whole idea for this video. And I was sort of planning throughout the week what I was going to use in this video. And then out of nowhere, I wasn't expecting it. Wet n Wild sent me their Halloween 2019 collection. The collection itself is absolutely tremendous. So I'm not going to get through all of the things in it today. But with the exception of my base and brows, which were already done when I started filming, I will be using everything except one small item from that collection in this look today. Before we get into it, I will leave a timestamp on the screen up here if you are not interested in hearing about this part. But if you are waiting for Book Club, my Get Ready With Me series to restart, I am thinking that I want to do a special edition, one time only, like one segment only, Get Ready With Me for Halloween, specifically reading a creepy book because I read Carrie this week for the first time ever. I'm not actually done with it. I'm a few chapters away from the end right now. I have actually never read Stephen King before, believe it or not. I wanna do a Get Ready With Me episode on that book. So I wanted to let you guys know that that was my thought and my plan is to do that for the week of Halloween. So if you want to get in on that, you could start reading it now. I will leave a link to it down below. Pretty sure a lot of you have probably already read it or seen one of the movies in the past. So even if you can't keep up on the reading part, you'll be able to kind of hang out and partake. And also since it is Halloween time, I can do like a Halloween style get ready with me too. And I think it'll be a cool way to dip back in for one episode before we start a new series. For this little witch outfit today, I'm obviously gonna show you how I did the makeup, but I'm also going to show you my outfit that I have along with it because just like kind of threw together a, a witchy-ish ensemble and my thought was that this would be a good semi-costume for somebody who had to dress up for work or for like a party or to take your kids out trick-or-treating or something along those lines. A lot of years on Halloween I wind up transforming myself into something ridiculous like two years ago I turned myself into Post Malone. If you haven't seen that video if you want to watch it I'll put it up here. Last year I turned myself into Daria which was really fun but it's also ridiculous and not super practical if you have to wear the costume around all day. If you want to see that video I'll also link that up here. But this year I decided that I wanted to do something that was easier for you guys if you just wanted to like just be cute and be Halloween-y. Before we get into it, please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a moment and you do enjoy my videos because it's very helpful to me and I really appreciate it. And if you are new around here, please go ahead and subscribe because I may look like a witch today, but in general, I'm a nice lady and I would love to have you around. So if you want to see how I got this pretty witch makeup look or you want to see the details of my little casual witch outfit I've got going on or if you're just interested in the Wet n Wild Halloween collection, stick around. We're going to get right into it and start this makeup look with that Wet n Wild collection. I just zoom all the way out. This box that Wet n Wild sent over is tremendous. This is what they sent. It's called the Fantasy Makers Collection. This is a whole haunted house set up filled with Halloween themed makeup. And from what I saw looking through it, I haven't opened everything yet, but it seems like everything is like limited edition Halloween stuff. And I have heard a few people say that they've already seen this stuff on display at Walmart. So you can pick it up there apparently. That is a really big box. And I know a lot of brands are trending towards smaller PR packages, things that are more easily recyclable. But to be fair, in this collection, this entire box is filled with makeup. Like there's no 
empty space in there really at all and the whole thing is made of cardboard so it's still pretty easily recyclable so overall not too bad this is ooh, I'm dropping the stencils but this is what the inside looks like there are four different sections in here and literally an ass load of makeup quite frankly so I'm gonna go through here I'm gonna pick out some stuff that I think will be good for this pretty witch look that we're gonna do today we'll get started making this pretty witch look so for the eyes, I want to do something that's like dark, sultry, smoky, kind of like the eye that I did in the house labs trial video. Speaking of my house labs review, in my comments on there, a bunch of you guys were telling me that Wet n Wild also had really good uh, liquid eyeshadows. And I was like, I didn't even know that Wet n Wild had liquid eyeshadows. And I mean, guess what? There's a bunch of their liquid eyeshadows in this collection. So I'm going to use the black one. I might use this diamond shade one. What's it called? Bon Appetit. And I'm going to use two of the Color Icon eye palettes. This is Wizards in Training. And this one is called In the Smoke. So we're going to see how these perform. I'm going to take my BH number six brush and I'm going to start with this kind of fuchsia shade up here. So I'm going to start by blending this through my crease. On the lid, I'm going to take one of the liquid eyeshadows. This is the black cream shade called Bat Temper. I'm going to start by putting it right by the lash line. I'm going to bring it across the whole lid and then try blending it into the crease. Obviously, I'm going to have to put more shadows to blend it out, but I think this will be a good start so far. That's like really opaque, like shockingly opaque. And just to blend the edge of that, I'm going to grab my Nabla pointed crease brush and just soften the edge before it dries down. Okay, I definitely like went too far trying to blend those out as far as the shape goes. So I'm going to grab some make remover or makeup wipe and clean that up before we continue the lower lash line. But for now, I'm going to leave it because um, I'm probably going to need to clean up underneath my eye as we continue on anyway. I'm going to grab my MAC 221S brush. And I'm gonna go into the other transition shade right in that same palette. This is the Wizards in Training one. A little bit of the black too, just to darken that up. I feel like that'll make it easier to blend the black cream shadow into the pink. The black liquid shadow is pretty much gonna just serve as like a really deep primer for us to put down something delightful. I take a dab and smudge brush from Nabla and I'm gonna go into this purple shade with, it has like a little bit of gold and pink shimmer in it. I think it's very pretty. So I'm gonna put that across the lid over the black base that we put down, press it over the black liquid shadow. I'm getting a lot of fallout, but I kind of expected that. I mean, I don't know if it would look that good without the black base, but as a combo, that looks funky fresh. That looks good. I'm gonna grab my MAC 221 brush and blend that a bit. I'm gonna clean up some of the fallout right now because I don't want it to get out of control. It's a very dark shade, so sometimes I can make quite a mess. So for the center of the lid, I wanna add a little bit of an interesting twist to the smoky eye. Instead of highlighting it with a classic shade, I'm gonna take this. This is the Color Icon blush. This is called Zombie Blush. Let me open it so you can actually see it. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it? Jesus, Nicole, get it on your shit. This is what the zombie blush looks like. It's like a brown to green duochrome. Now, obviously, in normal life, this is a weird blush. But in the context of Halloween makeup, I definitely see how it makes sense. Like if you painted your whole face green, you want to be like a glam zombie or something, you could totally highlight with this and it would look cool as hell. Then like, like maybe some kind of a skull look or something. But I'm not really doing a full face paint today. This is essentially like a glam look with a little bit of like a Halloween twist to it. So I'm gonna use this to, ooh, I'm gonna almost drop it, but I'm also gonna use it to highlight the center of my eyelid. I'm just gonna actually apply it with my finger. I'm gonna dip right into it and just dab it in the center of my lid. Okay, that's a cool color, but I think that maybe the way to apply this is on a wet brush. So let me try that. This is how it swatches on my finger, by the way. It's really, really pretty, but over another shadow, it needs a little bit of help. So that's what we're gonna do. There we go. That's better. I put concealer down and I powdered a lot so that if we do get more fallout again, we can just sweep it away. This collection also has these multi sticks in them. I've never used these from Wet n Wild before. This one is black, so I'm gonna use this one through my waterline. It's nice and rich black. 
I'm also going to bring a little bit of that through my lower lashes and underneath my lower lash line so that I can use that as like a base like we did on the top with the liquid one. Historically, I haven't had a ton of luck using liquid shadows on my lower lash line, so I'm gonna just skip that idea today. I'm gonna take a small brush and just blend that out. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time blending it because I'm gonna go over it with more stuff anyway, but it makes it easier in the long run. I actually like that pencil a lot. Like, I don't know how it wears or if it dries down, but like, it goes on really nice. And I'm gonna go into the same shade that I used on the top lid, which is this one down here. This is the In The Smoke palette, by the way. I was gonna press that over the black pencil, that same little tiny brush. I'm gonna grab this other liquid catsuit liquid shadow in the color Bone Appetit. Get it? Bones, like a skeleton. I'm gonna use this to highlight the inner corner. So I'm just gonna take it right from the wand, dab a little bit of that on there because these seem to be pretty potent. And then use a clean pencil brush just to dab out the edges of that and blend it in. I'm gonna go do the same steps on this eye. I'm gonna add lashes and then we will continue to use some cool highlighters and then a lip. All right, so because we're going very bold with this look today, obviously, I put on my Coley Cosmetics Brooklyn Lashes. Love these, they're super fluffy, but they're like way long. Look how long they are from the side. Wow, look at those, perfect for Halloween. So to highlight my cheeks, I'm gonna use one of the more conventional highlighters in the package. This is, it's still not a conventional highlighter because it's kind of like blue to pink, lavender-y kind of. This one is called Caught in Your Web. I don't know if you can see on camera. Oh, you can see it at that angle. Look, there's like a little skull pressed into it. That's pretty cute. I'm gonna grab my Nabla highlight brush and I'm just gonna highlight as usual with that. Shows up a lot on camera, that's cool. Now, every witch, not every witch, but a lot of times witches have a mole. And we're trying to be cute today. So I wanna make a cute mole. To do that, I want to put a star mole on and this collection does, hold on, let me grab, wait, stand by. This collection does have stencil tacks involved. Now, I'm not gonna use these because I just, I just, I don't like stencils in general. I don't like nail stencils. I don't like stencils for makeup. I know some people find them very useful and if you're one of those people, then I'm sure these will be fine. But for me, it's easier to just use my Milk Makeup Tattoo Stamp or even just hand draw a star because I mean, a star's not that hard to hand draw. But I do like the tattoo stamp because A, it's really fast and B, they're super uniform. So I'm gonna put a star-shaped mole right over here in mole territory. Of course, I didn't get it even on the first try, but hang on, I'm gonna get close to the mirror and try again. All right, so the liquid lipsticks in this collection are, some of them, super interesting. So I picked out the ones that I think are the most cool of the bunch, and I swatched them on the back of my hand. Now, before I show you this, fair warning, I'm the worst swatcher maybe in the world. The first one is called Counted Clout. The second one is called Emerald City. Third one is called Shady Witch. The last one, which is arguably the most interesting in the bunch, is called Witch Please. This is a metallic army green. I cannot wait to wear this with another look. But to complement this look, I think the one that I want to go with is the first purple one. I don't know what How Did Clout means. Like, it means like, is it mean like hot couture, like, but clout? I don't understand the pun, you know? I'm not, I'm just not following. There is also a gloss in here, this one, it's called Grave Robber, and it's super interesting and cool. I'm not sure if I wanna use it over the lipstick yet, or if I want to dab one of the other blush colors over the lipstick, because this purple one in the color Ghoul, I think would be really cool over that too. So I'm gonna put the liquid lipstick on first and then decide after. Okay, so I popped on my fake bangs. A couple of you guys were asking, what happened to your fake bangs? I really liked them. A couple of you seem to really hate my fake bangs, but whatever. I burnt my last pair with my straightener, and I still wore them in a video after that, but then I tried to 
fix them by using the straightener on them more and just literally just burnt them to a crisp. So I had to buy new ones. Definitely need to be styled still, but we're gonna be wearing them under our witch hat today. So I don't think it's entirely necessary. So I bought this little witch hat on Amazon. This is the cutest interpretation of a witch hat I've ever seen in my life. It's knitted. It's like a real life hat. Like you could wear this just in normal life. It's not like costume material. It's kind of like almost like sweater material. And the end has a wire so you can like adjust the brim a little bit, but it still has that little witchy top. And I just thought this was the cutest shit I ever saw. And quite frankly, it inspired this entire video. So I'm gonna pop this hat on with the bangs. Like the majority of the witchiness is coming from the hat. I did plan an entire outfit to go along with this. It's like regular clothes. It's not like a witch dress or anything, but I felt like it had the right vibe for the witchiness, but it was also like normal clothes that you can wear out. So I'm gonna go into the other room. I'm gonna change into that. I'm gonna show you in the mirror what my little outfit is. I never show you guys outfits. It's usually not what I do on this channel at all, but you know what? No day like today. I love this hat. I honestly think I might wear this hat for not Halloween. <laughs> okay, so here's my little witch outfit. However, it's the next day and I'm not wearing any makeup right now because your girl's an idiot. I filmed this yesterday after I finished the makeup during the video and I filmed it in portrait mode. And literally the first rule of YouTube is thou shalt not film in portrait mode. So I refilmed today. Now, as far as shoes, these are my first option. These are my Doc Martens. I forget the name of the actual design of them, but they're like my favorite. They're so cute. However, they are enormous. They're very, very tall. They make me about 6'3", I would say. So I also have these as an option, which is also a more affordable option. These are from Target and they're arguably kind of more witchy looking as well. If I do wind up wearing this outfit on Halloween, which I will if I decide to go trick-or-treating with my niece, then I'm gonna go for those just for comfort reasons. If I was gonna wear it out at night, I'd wear with those because quite frankly, those make my legs look snatched as fuck. So here are the Doc Martin boots. I don't know how to stand in the mirror and take videos of my outfits. It's awkward. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like, do I do this? Do I do this? Do I do this? Like, what do you do? Do, do I stick a leg out? I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. How do people make this look good? I don't understand. Anyway, the leggings, these are the Spanx Moto leather leggings. I live in these in the fall and winter. And so obviously they're kind of like black and appropriate for the look. So jumped on the chance to throw them back on again. This sweater is really hot and making me very sweaty right now but it also has this cool shoulder detail that has like a ring on it. I feel like that ring makes it very appropriate for the witchy look. And like I said earlier, this hat, I found it on Amazon. It is like a knitted real hat, not like a costume material hat. I look so gross, ew, I'm so sorry. That is how it looks with the higher shoes. I'll switch to the lower shoes and show you that in a second. And this is the lower boot option. These are still super cute. And you know, the Spank leggings take care of a lot, so you don't really need the heel. So yeah, this is the outfit, comfy, casual, still kind of gives you the witch vibe. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do these mirror videos. Um, I'll figure it out and get better at it eventually if I keep trying, I suppose. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but these boots are from Target and they were like $30 and I think they still have them. So if they do, I'll link them below because they are a good find. Okay, that's enough for this outfit part. I'm not good at this. Let's get back to the makeup. I will link all of the outfit details in the description down below. Not that I feel like I did a very good job of showing or selling that outfit at all. Awkward, I'm so awkward. But I just felt like it was a good little ensemble to throw together, especially if you're gonna be doing something where you wanna be festive and like in a costume, but like also feel like you're in normal enough clothes to be functioning in life, like if you're gonna be dressing up for work or something. Like I used to work at a restaurant where we had to dress up for Halloween and this would have totally been something that I would wear for that. As far as this Wet n Wild collection is concerned, um, I really liked most of what I used. I do have to say though that the shadow palettes, these are different than the quads that have come out in the last few collections from them that I've reviewed. And they work okay, but they're definitely a little bit, maybe I wanna say 
a drier formula for sure and the dark shades had a lot of fallout now like i always say fallout doesn't make me hate a shadow but i like to know in advance so i can like be prepared and in this case especially with that glittery dark shade that i used it looked beautiful but like i for real had fallout like on my nose it was like up on my forehead somehow like maybe that was my fault maybe i'm just a clumsy witch but i don't know girl it was everywhere so i would recommend that if you do pick these up maybe do your foundation after you do your eyes that's not usually the way i like to do my makeup but in certain cases it's necessary so that would be my recommendation there the liquid catsuit liquid eyeshadows i'm pretty impressed with these i definitely see why you guys brought them up when i was talking about the house labs one the glitter one especially this one was really really intense and really nice i like this a lot and i'll probably get a lot of use out of it the black one is very pigmented initially when you put it down I would say though that it doesn't blend out quite as well as the House Labs one does, but it works beautifully as an eyeshadow base. And as for the zombie blush, obviously you're not going to pick this up as a blush and use it all the time, but if you do pick it up for Halloween, if you're actually doing a zombie look with it and then you want to get more use out of it later, it does work beautifully as an eyeshadow over a black base. I will absolutely be using this in that way again because I really like the effect that it gave. The highlighter with a little skull pressed into it, this one was in the shade Caught in Your Web. This is a really nice iridescent highlighter. It's not the most blinding highlight I've ever used in my life, but it definitely gives a very iridescent bluish effect and it's a nice color. It seems to sit nicely on the skin. I don't know that I would wear it for like all the time because I don't, I'm kind of over the blue highlight thing at the moment. I'm really um, more into like a pink highlight these days. As far as for this look, I think it worked out perfectly. And as far as the formula, I think it's pretty good. It's not gonna knock your socks off and be like, oh my God, I've never been blinded by a blue highlight like this before in my life. But it's gonna get the job done. One item that really stood out to me and I didn't see this coming as a standout is the multi-stick. This worked beautifully in my waterline. It worked beautifully for eyeshadows underneath my eyes as a base. And I've had it on for a little over, a, maybe closer to an hour. I was gonna say like over a half hour, but it's closer to a full hour now and nothing seems to be moving at all. And usually if a pencil is not gonna stay well in my waterline, I start losing bits of it like immediately and that doesn't seem to be the case so far. So I don't know if it's gonna wear well throughout the day, but I have high hopes for it. And with this and everything else that I didn't touch yet in this collection, I'm gonna try to use them in like Halloween looks and stuff or just use it day to day if I can and update you guys on my Instagram stories because there is such a large amount of stuff in this collection that I haven't managed to get through today. I'm gonna play around with that stuff in the days to come and probably post about it on my Instagram stories and you may or may not see it later in another Halloween tutorial or something like that. I'm not sure yet because I'm gonna be quite frank with you. I haven't really decided uh, what my other Halloween content is going to be, if any, so uh, we'll, we'll just see where the road takes us with that. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're gonna be for Halloween this year or if you're just gonna stay home a lot of times I do these costumes because like they're fun to do for YouTube and then on actual Halloween I wind up just staying home in my house and watching a movie or something I don't know why I'm like this I'm like a hermit please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it because it really helps me out I really appreciate it and also if you are new around here go ahead and subscribe for more videos usually I'm not such a witch nor am I usually so awkward standing in my mirror but such is life. If you want to keep up with me between videos, you want to see my Halloween lip art, you want to see me unbox stuff on my Instagram stories, or take part in polls and sneak previews of what's coming up on this channel, go find me on Instagram. I'm at Miss Quinface over there. And I would love to have you be part of that little crew as well. I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this pretty little witch tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>